what's your reading, Sanjay, of stress assets? And we have seen a couple of large groups deleveraging. You saw the SR group deleverage, de sell some of their assets. You saw the JP group do that as well. Do you see many of those stress asset sales taking place? Yeah, I think you'll see sales because I, I think people want to rescue their reputation and they want to get on with life. But I'm not seeing any signs of true fair market value sales by the banks. Yeah. And I think unless you have a fair market clearing price, this whole system is going to be completely bottlenecked, whether you use ARCs, you do SRs, whatever you use. Uh, to, to really make this thing work, you've got to have fair market clearing price. Mm -hmm. You can run a process, you can auction it, but there's a price at which the asset will clear. And I think by every day that passes along, that price is getting worse. Because today we notice banks are even frozen on giving working capital to well-run companies who just seem to have an elongated working capital by 60 days just because exports are terrible or whatever. You know, the banks are frozen. So they're not, e so, I mean, if you're not even in the ICU, they're like, you're going into the ICU and then it's just terrible after that. So I'm actually really worried that this number is going to keep increasing, whatever the number is. Uh, and there is no clearance of an asset, a true sale of an asset. And the reason is, and there are many reasons for it, we can talk about it. The real reason is the banks just cannot afford to take the haircut. And the word afford being for various reasons, but afford is very important. You've got to give them the confidence to take the haircut, and then they will take the haircut because they're all sensible people. Uh, you want to have a Sorry. touch of optimism yeah. on, yeah. on that thing. Yeah. One of the things that actually, you know, you mentioned sale of assets by corporate groups. Actually, this is something we've been seeing for the first time where corporates are selling some of their good assets to delever. You've seen about 15 to 20 billion of that happen in the last year, which is about, uh, you know, assets being sold to delever, which is about 10% of, you know, the number you had out there in terms of stressed assets. So mm -hmm. that is something we haven't seen. I mean, the issue no, of banks doing point. is no, definitely an issue. Yeah, That's a fair point. Maybe I answered it the other way around. But corporates, I think, to save reputation, will do sales, whether it's significant majorities, significant minorities, or control. That's what I was commenting on taking on from where Mintu left, that the banks have to lighten up the balance sheet and it has to be true asset sales. Well, I don't see signs of that. And, and, and this okay, is a point so that many, clear. many experts make, Aisha, perhaps you can come on this, that banks are unwilling to do it because, you know, they're not willing to take big haircuts on loans that they've not provided for. And that's a big challenge. Uh, is that an accurate observation? I mean, I think you haven't seen, you know, as Sanjay has mentioned, you haven't seen uh, banks doing it for a number of different reasons. I think, first of what all, would they be? well, I think people need to just have the uh, uh, comfort that whatever decisions get made today don't get questioned, you know, in the future. Um, I think that's one issue. Uh, the second is, I think the discussion as to really what is a true fair market value is something that people need to ultimately accept. You know, some of these companies are trading well below um, you know, the prices that people are comfortable with or fair market value is potentially much below the prices that people are comfortable with. Uh, so I think it is um, something that is being debated a lot, I know, uh, but we've not seen any real uh, decisions getting made as yet. So I think there are a couple of things sure. I'd like to add. So one, we've seen this story play out in Asia over the last 20 years. In the aftermath of the Asian financial crisis, you saw some countries that were much more proactive and much more forceful in cleaning up the banks. And if you look at the rebound in their economies and the fact that you fundamentally solved the problem and then moved on, was actually very convincing and very emphatic. Countries that have continued to kind of kick the can down the road obviously have seen these periodic, you know, kind of, uh, you know, alarms and panics go off. Second, you've got to recognize that, you know, and again, this is something that we've seen repeatedly, the problem starts in the private sector. Now, you can debate as to you know, whether it's an economic downturn or whether it's, you know, some factors that have precipitated the private sector crisis. Sure. Then the problem moves to the banking sector, and eventually you need a government bailout. It's the same thing that happened in the U.S. It's the same thing that happened in the EU. So I think if you isolate the problem and say that the banks, because of a variety of reasons, are not being able to solve the problem, I think you're really looking at a movie that's, you know, already kind of, you know, midway. Okay. So I, I do think that, you know, this, this problem needs eventually you know, has to land at the doorstep of the government. You need to create the capital, you need to create a facilitative kind of environment and backdrop, and that's the only way you get the, the problem solved. Hi, my name is Nikhil. 
Uh, my question is, what would you recommend, and this is really directed at I think Mintu and Sanjay, what would you recommend to the government in terms of allowing um, these stress assets to be sold uh, from banks' balance sheets? What, what are the few recommendations you would make? <coughs> to the government. You're saying, what would we recommend to the government? I have to be very careful. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, I think that the criminalization of lending has to stop. I think that's number one. I think number two, um, the ability to capitalize the banks to provide the the monies that they that the banks the balance sheets need to be able to take those haircuts and move on. But I do think that what I think everybody has said here, which is economies do best when you take the hit, you move on, you revitalize. And I think that's the advice to the government. Do whatever it takes to cut, to let these banks, let these assets move and be revitalized. And that might be new management, that might mean whatever it takes, but essentially it's, it's time. And, it, and kicking the can further uh, is not going, to, not going to be healthy. I think one of the things that you know, if you really understand what their issues are, the government issues, they don't want to be seen to be bailing out one, one person versus the other. <clears throat> they don't want, uh, obviously they want to minimize the equity that they have to plug into the banks. So now this has been done before. I mean, in Italy, for example, you have a three, four way trapper, right? I think you guys are a part of that as well. And you basically, whether you call it a bad bank or you call it a national ARC or whatever, but the private capital must participate in that, and that, that must drive the value, the, the right price. The banks should define some threshold and put all the assets, not cherry pick them. And the government should you know, give some kind of a equity plug for the banks, for the haircut they're taking. So then it's pretty democratic as a process. So if you try to address their objectives, I don't want to single out one versus the other, then you just define a threshold. You put all the assets in the national ARC, you bring in private capital that is supposed to put in new money into it, either for new capex or maintenance capex, um, and then you obviously have consultants and experts working in it. You know, this has worked. I mean, in Italy, in three, four years, people are giving money back. It didn't take very long in the U.S. This was the top. The top came in, and the government made whatever I don't know what they made. They made six, seven percent, and they got their money back in ten years. So it can be done. It's just got to start. Um, but I do understand the government's concerns. They want to be democratic. They don't want to be, uh, they want to be unbiased. Yeah. And they want to make sure that no one particular uh, private capital provider is taking somebody for a ride. So you have a competitive process. It can be done. It's, you know, we have, at least we have provided them a few schematics and diagrams. Uh, we'll, we'll see here. Rather than you know, announce 25,000 crores this year and then 25,000 crores next year, it's A, it's small, and B, again, it's too directed. They should play the role of just putting it into a, into a national... See, bad bank is a bad word. What's happening is the bad bank then becomes as if you're bailing somebody out. So I think we have to appreciate what their issues are. But there are solutions.